I'm Philia Stain from Mukuri, and this is in Kota Kota Wildlife Reserve. Nkota Kota Wildlife Reserve lies in the heart of Malawi, approximately three and a half hours drive northeast of the capital Lilongwe, close to the lake shore. This is a wild and rugged terrain, far from the usual tourism destinations and perfect for off the beaten track wilderness explorers. You can expect dense Myombu woodlands, shallow wetlands, lush grassland, thick riverine forest and even patches of rainforest. Rivers and streams plunge inexorably downwards from the Rift Valley Highlands in the west towards Lake Malawi on the eastern side of the reserve, cutting deep valleys as they go. The reserve is home to elephants and a good selection of other wildlife such as leopard, sable antelope, eland and buffalo. The best place to start exploring in Kota Kota is at the Environmental Education Centre near the main entrance gate. Here you can order some delicious local dishes from the restaurant and learn more about the history and conservation efforts of the reserve as well as the significance of its location. Kota Kota is uh, situated in the central region of Malawi and where we are here uh, to the east, this is the lake, uh, Lake Malawi and uh, the Boa River is cutting across uh, through the reserve or they are going down. The highest point being Chipata here and the north of it is quite rugged. So all, pretty much most of the wildlife is uh, around here. Um, as a tourist uh, destination, we have uh, the greatest advantage here because uh, it combines both uh, upland uh, tourism, that is to see wildlife, to see the reserve, but as well they have a choice to go to the lake uh, down there. At the same time, having a history of uh, slave trade, we've got a, a slave route which cuts across in here. So that as well is uh, another important historical aspect which uh, promotes the tourism side of this, uh, this place. In the garden outside stands a so-called problem elephant, a life-size statue made from wire snares, gin traps, saw blades and old rifles, all of which were historically used by poachers to kill elephants in the region. Now, after decades of uncontrolled hunting and poaching, a conservation organization called African Parks took over the management of the reserve in 2015. And in partnership with Malawi's Department of National Parks and Wildlife, they embarked on one of the biggest translocation projects ever to restock the reserve with natural occurring wildlife. In 2016 and 17, nearly 2,000 animals were successfully reintroduced into Nkota Kota, including 486 elephants. Today, visitors stand a great chance of seeing these gentle giants, along with a variety of other species. One of the best game viewing spots in the reserve is only a short drive from the Environmental Education Center. We've come here to the Henry and Sanyama hide to see whether we can spot any animals. It's one of two platform hides in the reserve. Let's hope we get lucky. The hide has a helpful animal identification board against the inside wall and overlooks a large clearing and permanent water hole. And if you sit here for long enough, you're bound to see something coming down to drink. If you're a bird watcher, I highly recommend taking a guided walk along the Pua River. Virtual skookles, broad billed rollers, Purple crested taracos and swallowtailed bee eaters are often seen here and are just a few of the 280 plus bird species that call in Kota Kota home. If you enjoy hiking, you can come here to a place called Chipata Hill in the southwest of the reserve. It's about a two hours drive from the main entrance gate and then another hour to hour and a half to the top, depending on how fit you are. Now the locals call it Chipata Mountain and I can see why. The walk up the hill is not only a great way to get some exercise, but it's also an opportunity to learn more about the region's plants and their many traditional uses, like how to make a rope, a toothbrush, or even how to imitate an elephant. So our ranger Happy that's taking us up the hill here has got a nice trick for us. So I should have to take the leaves from the Brasidia manga. So these are the two leaves, then 
put in two big fingers and fold it one side and the other side. Then let's hear the sound now. <coughs> <coughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Halfway up the hill you leave the lower lying Miombu woodland and enter dense Afromontani forest closer to the top. Wow this forest is absolutely beautiful. You can't believe you're in the same reserve let alone the same country. We walked all the way to the spirit tree, a place where historically locals came to worship their god. There really is something spiritual about Nkota Kota. Perhaps it's the vastness of this massive 180,000 hectare reserve, or maybe it's knowing that there are people like David and Happy who are successfully transforming this piece of wilderness back to its former glory.